What's up gamers, Mr. Video Game here. So I just got done with one of the busiest weeks of my life, and I, I'm, I'm still pretty busy at the moment. Uh, today, we fumigated my apartment, uh, because I live in Brooklyn, in a very old building. I also recently started editing for a new client that works on D&D terrain, which has been really fascinating and fun to work on. And a couple other things, some exciting, some mundane, uh, that have kept me busy and away from YouTube for a bit. But the one that we're going to talk about today uh, is that I was asked to help uh, with the tech crew uh, for a no-budget production of Spring Awakening that my roommate Max was doing. I actually hadn't done tech for theater before. I'd only ever acted on stage. But I kind of figured that, uh, you know, I, I've done enough film and uh, all the stuff that I've done for YouTube and everything. I, I felt like I could probably figure it out. So I started helping them out at the church that we were doing Spring Awakening at, which, if you know Spring Awakening, is pretty ironic. And it was a beautiful church. It was also poorly maintained. A lot of weird wiring, uh, a lot of lights not actually uh, fixed to the bars that they're supposed to be hanging on, speakers that don't work, backup speakers that also don't work, subwoofers with nothing to run the subwoofers into. Basically, it turned into a lot of 14-hour days in a row uh, leading up to the actual performances where we were still also showing up pretty early to try and work out some last-minute issues beforehand. It was intense and challenging, and it was a pretty big learning experience, but at the end of the day, we pulled it off. Max and his boyfriend Jordan uh, had made this beautiful lighting setup. I think they had something like six lights, maybe eight altogether, but they managed to successfully light uh, this immersive theater piece where they were going out into the audience and uh, the movement all over the place. We had to fill the whole room uh, at times, and uh, they, they did it. The best I can say about the sound is that it worked. Um, there's not really any insanely impressive way you can get microphones to go through the speakers, but that's not really the point of this video. The point of it is that I am not somebody who likes Spring Awakening. I remember when I was in high school and it became the thing, uh, I just wasn't a fan of it. It felt edgy to me, I thought it didn't really have much depth to it, I, you know, the list goes on. Who knows how much of it was just me being contrarian, uh, yeah, it was high school. And after this production, I still don't think I'm a huge fan of the script. In a lot of ways, it just doesn't resonate with me. And I think that that's just kind of the way that it's going to be for the rest of my life, and that's okay. What I do think is interesting is that there are a couple moments, and one song in particular, that really spoke to me and struck me. And when I look back over that week, apart from just the general sheer joy <laughs> that I had at actually being in a theater again for extended periods of time and like really working on a show like a live show not a film not a video there was just something about that feeling that was like really wonderful to me but outside of that uh when I look at how I felt doing this show versus how I felt every time I'd seen anything Spring Awakening before whether it's the straight play that it's based off of uh or the musical itself I started thinking about how I've grown as a person. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you're probably aware that the kind of stuff that I make and the way that I approach it and my tone uh, has changed a lot, especially over the last couple years. And I've talked about it a couple times here and there, but I don't know if I've ever directly addressed this thing in particular. But I've really been making an effort to interact with media in a healthier way than I did when I was younger. And it's not about liking everything or liking the right things. It's more about the way that I go about liking and disliking things. When I was in middle school and high school, I didn't have a lot in the way of friends. I think some of it was definitely that, you know, I moved around quite a bit when I was younger. And the town that we wound up in uh, was the kind of place where, you know, like people know each other for a long time. And so I felt like a bit of an outsider there. But I think most of it was just that for a variety of reasons... Some of them understandable, others definitely, definitely unreasonable. I was just kind of a little shit to people. I was a contrarian, I always wanted to feel smarter than everybody. And you know, when you start getting older, and you're getting closer to adulthood, and you're interacting with people on a more regular basis, you start learning about social capital. You start worrying about what your interests say about you. And so I think for a long time, I was liking and disliking things for the wrong reasons. And I always had to have an extremely strong opinion about everything. My mom's calling, I don't know why. So I always had to have a strong opinion about shows and music and all this stuff. And a lot of it was to 
try and make myself feel like I had things figured out, unlike other people. That was a lot of it. And I think it's something that a lot of us do, even though I'm pretty sure most of us know, intellectually, that's dumb. The human ego is just a fascinating thing. The point is, when I came out to New York, and I met people from different walks of life, and I started seeing how their lives were shaped by the things that they interacted with, and how they could just take something that I thought was absolute trash, and how it could be this incredibly important thing to them. My initial gut response in high school would have been to think that they were stupid. But as I got older and I developed empathy and I started creating my own things, I started realizing that when it comes to, like, good or bad or whatever, I, that really just doesn't matter, man. It does not matter if Citizen Kane is the greatest movie ever made if somebody's watching it and it means nothing to them. That doesn't mean Citizen Kane is worthless and doesn't mean anything to anybody, but in that moment, to that person, it just doesn't land with them. And that's fine, and it's not a threat to anybody else's enjoyment, because the things that we create, media, art, entertainment, when we, when we interact with it, that's when it gains its value. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest does not have any value by itself. You know? You take that book, or the movie, and you, and you put it in a room by itself, and it never interacts with a single person, it means absolutely nothing. All of its value is gained when it interacts with somebody. And then that value at that moment is determined by that person's perspective. Even, like, the state that they're at. The value could change with the same person based on where that person is at in their life. All of the stress over creating something that's good or something that's bad, it, none of that matters. It's one of the most liberating feelings, both as a, a creator and a consumer, that I, that, that I realized. When I acted in my first short film, like, six or seven years ago, seven years ago, we would get comments from uh, mostly gay men who would be like, that is exactly like my coming out experience. And like, I relate to this so hard and this, like, this touches me in a way that, uh, that, that a film hasn't touched me before. We get like a lot of these like incredibly heartwarming comments about how this made people feel seen and feel understood. And then we get a comment underneath it that was like, this doesn't happen. When it's like, there's five comments right above you that are like, this is exactly what happened to me. So either they're all liars, or you think that your perspective is the perspective. You know? And so I didn't understand that stuff completely. People are having a straight up fight outside my apartment right now. Hell yeah, brother. And I definitely didn't understand this right away. Uh, like at that point, I was still an incredibly insecure person. Uh, who was in, like, an unhealthy long-term relationship and uh, had a lot of friends that weren't good for him but was too afraid to break him off. I did not exactly have my epiphany at that moment, but it made the wheels start turning, kind of. But over the years, I thought more about that, and I was trying to figure out, like, as a creator, like, what do I want to do? What does it mean to, like, create something that matters and something that's substantial? And I think what I really figured it out was the video that I made on The Life Aquatic. This, this movie that completely changed its value and its purpose based on where I was at in my life. And I think that was where I really started figuring it out. And the last year has been me figuring out how to put that into words more effectively. And it's been one of the most freeing and powerful things. Not just from like an artistic perspective, but also just as a person who wants to be more empathetic. When I think about my ability to empathize with people who are nothing like me. Coming from an area where everybody had a pretty similar background to coming out here where everybody has such a wildly different story i feel like i've come a long way and i really want to help communicate that for example with the who's line video the last one i did two months ago the entire purpose of that video was to share that this video meant a great deal to me and there were a lot of amazing stories that people shared in the comments about how this also mattered to them. There's a guy that talked about his, his wedding. There was somebody who talked about their brother who passed away. This mattered to these people in these wildly different ways. And it's definitely not something that was intended by the people creating it. You know, like, like they were making it because they wanted to create something entertaining for people. They don't have control over the way that it hits and interacts with the people who, who receive 
that that art or that entertainment and that's partially what gives it the potential to be such a powerful thing and then there were still comments like the uk version was better or this version is bad or some people who like just use it as an excuse to like rip on aisha tyler and it's like no that's not the point is not to rip on anything the, the, the point is to show that like all these things have the potential to like impact you in ways that you maybe wouldn't think about at first in ways that aren't uh incredibly obvious on the surface so i've been trying to make a conscious effort to change from the kind of person who views his relationship with media as as some sort of way to like prove that you know i am i understand the craft better than anybody to, to some kind of like ego thing to just sort of in like a, a a celebration of like this stuff is amazing the fact that humans can create these things that that are so powerful on like this subtextual and intangible level it's something that blows my mind when i think about it no other creature does it as far as we know who knows maybe penguins actually do have like some form of like incredible art that we just don't understand but as far as we know it's this incredibly unique thing that we do and it's just worth celebrating and that's really what i want to do and so going into this production of spring awakening where i know i don't really like the show while i'm still not a huge fan of the show as a whole there are so many moments that i can pick out where i can just go like that's beautiful or like that hits me in this gorgeous way the moment that really got me every time i would want to watch it so i would finish setting my levels for that song i learned those levels like better than any of the others because i wanted to be able to just stop after the first couple seconds of the song and not have to worry about the soundboard and just turn around and just watch and it was touch me and it's not one of the songs that ever gets talked about everybody talks about bitch of living uh totally fucked or Mama Who Bore Me. Those are like the big songs that I always hear about um, that get performed all the time in cabarets that everybody wants to do, everybody wants to be known for. These are the big showstoppers. And they're great, catchy, powerful songs, but Touch Me is just this beautiful expression of just desperately wanting to know what it would be like to be completely loved and to completely love somebody. If you're not familiar with Spring Awakening, uh, the original play is, I think, a 19th century uh, German play. And it's about, more or less, like a puritanical society where kids just aren't told what sex even is or that it even exists. They are just not allowed to know anything about it until, you know, you're married off at the right age and you have your kids. And, like, that's that's it. That's the purpose of it. It's, it's this cold and detached and you must go about this the right way and just really inhuman way of looking at human intimacy and it's about the effect that it has on a bunch of 14 year olds who are you know starting to come of age they're going through puberty they're getting these feelings and they're, they have questions and they're wondering and so when the musical like first happened it became a big thing it got this big reputation as like a big like yeah fuck authority thing which you know it is like, it, a lot of it is about kind of rebelling against the status quo. But I really don't think that it's the heart of the show. And I didn't even realize that until this production. And maybe I'm wrong, and it could just entirely just be that this is the way it is to me. But I think that at its core, like, the big motivation behind all of this is just that we just so desperately want to have that connection and to feel safe completely sharing yourself with somebody else. And Touch Me is just this beautiful expression of that. It's a couple of these kids who, having been denied any kind of sexual education, have learned about it themselves, more or less, through through books. Their imagination is just running wild. And it's not about, like, the carnal, like, oh, yeah, I want to jack off on her tits. It's not stuff like that, but it's it's that, what would that feel like? How amazing would it be to share that with somebody? And Max has a really beautiful solo in it, and he kills it. And some of these lyrics talking about just the longing for that connection are so beautiful. Where I go, when I go there. No more weeping anymore. Only in and out your lips, the broken wishes washing with them to shore. Touch me, just try it. Now there, that's it. Oh God, that's heaven. That sounds a lot less horny and a lot more beautiful in context of the song. But trust me, the whole thing is absolutely beautiful. Well, a lot of the more extreme plot points and such don't really ring entirely true for me in the show. It's moments like that, these little, subtle, beautiful human moments 
rings true for me in a way that I don't know if I would have actually been able to understand when I was younger. But I think there are moments like that where, until now, I never really had given myself permission to think about and feel the intricacies and the, the, the beauty and the ugliness of kind of those human interactions and relationships. And I'm really glad that Max asked me to do this and I got to have that experience. And I'm happy that I'm able to take the show moment by moment and find those moments of beauty that just ring so incredibly true for me. I have that experience now. I I know what that feeling is. And that, and that feeling that I experienced through that production is something that I will take with me. And now it's in here and I can think about it. And it's one more step towards being a more empathetic person and towards being a more complete person and artist and it's something that can inform the things that I create in the future and can inform my interactions with people in the future and I think that that's the whole point of art I think at the end of the day that's it at least to me that's why it matters it helps us become more complete people it helps us understand each other it helps us express things and have things expressed to us that we otherwise would have trouble understanding this video was a little rambly uh, and I kind of apologize for that, but it's something I really wanted to sort out and uh, kind of get my thoughts on it out there, because uh, I'm really curious to see kind of what you guys think. Thank you for listening to my ramblings, and uh, take care of yourselves. I promise the next time I see you, it'll be with something that's had a little more effort put into it. <laughs> All right, take care.